In the previous video, we looked at the energy levels of the harmonic oscillator. So in this video, we want to continue on to look at what type of spectrum we're going to see for all the different uh, possible energies of photons, which can absor be absorbed between transitions between energy levels for the rigid rotor. Now this is usually called microwave spectroscopy because the region of the electromagnetic spectrum in which this occurs is in the microwave region. So these are lower energies than the infrared region which we were discussing for the harmonic oscillator. The molecular vibrations are typically in the infrared range. Molecular rotations are most typically in the microwave range of the spectrum. So we said our energy change, our difference in energy between uh, energy level J and J plus 1 for an absorption going from any going from J equals uh, J equals J to J equals J plus 1 is H squared Planck's constant squared over 4 pi squared times moment of inertia times J plus 1 so this moment of inertia <clears throat> is just the reduced mass of the two atoms in a bond of fixed length which is rotating times the bond length squared. And then reduced mass, we can remember, is just m1 times m2 over m1 plus m2, the product divided by the sum, where L is, as I said, the bond length. So to convert this to frequencies, we know delta E equals h nu. So the frequencies is this same expression, uh, but divided by h. So we go from h squared to h also equal to 2b times j plus 1, where this constant b in hertz is just h over 8 pi squared i. So if you're given a specific molecule with a specific bond length, you can derive from their individual masses and bond length what this mom moment of inertia is and what this rotational constant is. And if we want to put this instead of in hertz, cycles per second, uh, inverse seconds, we want to put that into inverse uh, centimeters. We can do that as well simply by dividing by the speed of light. So we go from B to B bar by adding in a speed of light in there. And you would want that in centimeters per second if you want in, in inverse centimeters as wave numbers are often expressed in, giving us this 2B bar times J plus 1 for the separation between the energy levels. So let's plot these energy levels here uh, in units of 2b bar and see what kind of transitions we get. So for the j equals 0 state, the first state, there's just one energy level down there at, let's see, that would be at j times j, times j plus 1 for the energy is going to be 0 times 0 plus 1. So this is just at an energy of, of 2b bar down here. Then the next energy level is going to be 2b bar higher than that. And there are going to be three states there because the degeneracy of each state is 2j plus 1. So j here is j equals 1. The degeneracy is going to be 3. Then uh, beyond that, going, going 4b bar higher than that, we're going to have a state of degeneracy five, there are going to be five possible energy states at this level. Going six B bar beyond that is going to be one with a degeneracy of seven. And I think by now you can see the pattern as we're going to expand these here. At eight B bar above that, we would have one of degeneracy nine. And beyond that, that's more uh, levels than I want to draw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, perfect. And as we said, we have j equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 for these energy levels. Our transitions between them are going to be the energy difference between any two given levels. And for the first two, that energy is 2b bar or 2b, depending on which unit you're using, hertz or inverse centimeters for your frequency. And the transition between the next one from j equals 1 to j equals 2 is going to be 4b bar. So this would be the omega bar observed here. Then the next is a transition of 6b bar. You can see these differences are growing by 2b bar every time. And finally, 
our transition from 3 to 4 would be 8B bar. So what kind of uh, lines are observed on a spectrum here relative to frequency? So if we start at 0 here, our lowest energy transition is just going to be a line and if this is if this is frequency in Hertz this line here would be our first one at 2 if we're doing this in units of B then the, the transition between 1 and 2 is a line at 4 2 and 3 is a line at 6 line at 8 line at 10 etc so a microwave spectrum, a pure microwave spectrum, is going to look like a series of evenly spaced, or more or less evenly spaced, when it's, when it's perfectly rigid, we're going to have a series of perfectly evenly spaced lines on a pure rotational spectrum. So this is going to be in the microwave region, because these, these values of B and B bar are going to be on the order of frequencies, which are micro, microwaves in in energy and it's going to be a set of evenly spaced lines. Um, we're going to go on from here to discuss what happens when we have vibrational transitions which couple to this as well. So we're going to look at situations where not only does the rotational energy level change but the vibrational level changes at the same time and what kind of spectra do you get in that case.